Hello, this is Dave Hammer. Today we continue discussions about the Cricut Utility Air Hammer. This video is the final part of a series that shows how to build the Cricut Utility Air Hammer. This video offers additional advice and lessons learned during and after building the Cricut. There are even a few alternatives to the original Cricut design provided. Air hammers need clean air with a very light oil mist. An air cleaner, regulator, and oiler should be installed fairly close to the hammer. The larger the inside diameter of the airline, the better. The original Cricut runs just fine with a 3 8 inch air hose that is connected to an air source that will supply its needs. Be sure all the fittings provide at least a 3 8 inch passage. The smallest passage of fixture restricts the air delivery capability. Please note, if you use a larger cylinder, you may need a larger inside diameter airline. Check for ram wobble before each use. Adjust the gibbs if necessary. If you notice significant grease on the tower during operation, wipe it off. Excessive grease on the tower is actually a fire hazard because of the scale. On the original Cricut, I need to pump a lot of grease into the gib slots to fill them. This results in a lot of grease being on the tower. This is not a good thing. Make your gibs with a close tolerance so you don't need excessive amounts of grease. This would best be accomplished by using full width gibs. The original Cricut is a lightweight when the ram is cycling fast, the hammer may wobble or walk around because the ram is causing significant lift when the ram starts its downstroke. To eliminate this from happening, significantly increase the weight of the anvil and or the base, or bolt the hammer to the floor. If the cylinder you use doesn't have cushions, it would be wise to consider putting bumpers on both the top and bottom of the tower to prevent the internal piston from hitting the end caps. I haven't validated this, but I am fairly confident in these guidelines. Heavier falling weights may require three and a quarter or even four inch bores with up to three quarter inch ports. Butterfly valves were selected for use over ball valves because they provide more proportional airflow when mapped against the handle movement. This is a significant performance issue for control on both the input and the output side of the air circuit. Be sure you blow out all the chips that are a result of drilling and threading holes. If you don't, chips will migrate into the air valves and damage them. Don't draw down on the bolts when you install air circuit valves. It could lock up or damage the internal mechanisms. Use double nuts locked together to ensure that they won't come loose. Use rubber hose. Flexibility is important. Plastic hose was problematic for me. Buy more hose than you think you need. You will probably be redoing some of it, and you can't get the hose off the barbs without cutting it. Use bolts for holding the frame together? Are you kidding? I still recommend using bolts over welding. They come in handy when adding additional bracketing. After your hammer is fully assembled and working to your satisfaction, you're going to love this. Remove every bolt one at a time and use Loctite 271 thread locker to ensure the bolts won't loosen during operation. Use an even heavier piece of plate than I did for the frame base. The heavier the base, the more stable the hammer will be. Forging height is a personal preference. I like to stand straight while I'm using a power hammer and have my elbows bent just a little while holding the stock I'm forging level. That posture defines the forging height the top of the lower die should be. 
Some folks sit while they are foraging, presumably, although not necessarily, this might mean the dive would be lower. In any case, you should have a strong preference where you want the lower die to be before you start building your hammer. It will affect the length of your anvil or the height of the base you add under your frame. During the episode that covered the frame construction, it was suggested the anvil be placed in the left front corner of the base. The anvil should be in a corner, but it could be in the right corner if that would suit your fancy better. Although I recommend running a tower all the way down to the base, if you already have a bar that would work, but it lacks a few inches in length for height, you could raise it a bit off the base. Just be sure there is enough overlap with the anvil for alignment and stability. The original Cricut has a one and three quarter inch square tower. If your ram assembly is heavier than 60 pounds or so, you should consider a heavier tower. I use the bolts that hold on the lower die to secure the table. It would be good to add additional bracketing below the table to secure it. It is important to prevent scale from falling down the openings on the table. I suggested and encouraged the use of a larger piece of the heavy fiber used to wipe the rod. It needs to allow for a little wiggle room for the ramp dock assembly hall. Don't use a polyester product for the fiber. Scale will burn it. The 8 inch length for the guidance system used on the original Cricut is minimal. The longer the guidance system is, the more stable the ram will be. The original Cricut has just two gib adjusters on each side, which is fine with the heavy brass gibs. If you use full width gibs, you may need more gib adjusters. Gib adjusters could be larger bolts for more surface contact to the back of the gibs. You might consider not welding the lower die together until the ram assembly is done and can be installed in the tower. This would allow you to line up the lower die perfectly with the upper die. The attachment of the handrail needs improvement. Currently, bumping against it is loosening its bolts too easily. I'm not sure using Threadlock will prevent this. Using larger bolts or fabricating something that would allow horizontal bolts to secure it would be better. It would have been easier just to plug weld a pin into the small plate to limit the outward travel of the handle on the stroke adjustment assembly. Also, drill holes for the spring on the stroke adjustment assembly. The spring will be less likely to come off. This is not a lessons learned, but if you want to make an even more simple version of the Cricut, you could eliminate the air gate. You wouldn't have single hit and clamp features. You could permanently mount the roller valve under the table. No stroke adjustment assembly would be necessary. You could put the ramp dock on the ram. This would eliminate the need for the ramp dock assembly. Just put a tower between the table and the handrail and statically mount the roller valve on it. That's all I have for now. I hope to have a website up soon with the Operations and Air Circuit description document, a forum, read only unless you are registered, and an ever-expanding FAQ. This is Dave Hammer. Thanks for listening.